Welcome to another episode of Women in Focus. Our woman in focus today is an amazing woman. Well, I say that every time I start a program. And you know what? They all are amazing. This young woman, I found out about her about a year ago. Um, an organization that she manages, she's the admin of the organization. It's a uh, volunteer service for all the women. It's called WOW. Women of Wisdom. And um, I thought to myself, someone who is doing this in her free time is a mother, also has a profession. I, I, I've got to meet her and see how she does it. So today, we're going to introduce you to this amazing woman. Her name is Ramia Vinod. She's got a longer name, but to make it easier, she said to me, I can call her Ramya Vinod. You're most welcome in our program. How are you doing? I'm good, Chishmaji. Thank you. So give me your full name. I'm actually Ramya Khoimbatore Prabhashankar. So South Indian. Yes. So we North Indians are very rude people. We just, we just think all South Indians are the same, but they're not. Yeah. So there are four, four Dravidian states. provinces. So which one do you come from? So I'm from Tamil Nadu. Ah, OK. So we speak Tamil. Uh -huh. And uh, the three other uh, states are like Andhra, Karnataka, and Kerala. OK. So all, as you said, like all most people uh, you know, think everybody are same. <laughs> <laughs> They're not. No. Because Kerala speak Malayalam. Yes. And Andhra speak Telugu. Telugu. And uh, kan, kan, Kar, uh, Karnataka speaks Kannada. Kan Kannada, yes. Wow, and how different are these four languages from one another? Oh, languages, if you see, um, of course, they are very different. Hmm. But uh, you can understand here and there a little bit of, you know, each and everybody's language. Right. Um, uh, but mostly, you know, nowadays, uh, English and Hindi has become more common nowadays, right? So that's right. a common ground everywhere. So, so common is English, I guess. Uh, yes, we in do South communicate. India, right? Yes, we do. You communicate, communicate with, with the yes. North. So, Ramya, let's talk a little bit about Women of Wisdom. Yes. Who came up with it? So uh, it was actually started by one of my friends. Her name is Hamsa Priya, who is the co-admin, I mean, who's admin of this group too. Hmm. So she started about uh, in 2016. So that's when she added me. That hmm. main purpose of the group was to just connecting women, women. who live in Surrey. Achha. So when I joined that group, there were like about 70 women in that. And uh, as, and, as and when, after I joined, she saw that the group is exponentially growing because I knew I have a very huge network already. Right. So I started adding them. And one point of time, she said, Ramya, I think you know more people than me. So why don't you just take over? Uh -huh. So once I take over, um, what I did was I introduced many rules to the group, I see. which was very new for everybody. Okay, what are these rules? Um, maybe basically my uh, profession, <laughs> I'm a physiotherapist, but I was a lecturer back then in India uh -huh. for about uh, four years and lecturer in Malaysia for four years. Wow. So that teacher and me <laughs> did not allow everybody to do anything what oh, they want. <laughs> I understand this so well. Yeah. I live with the teacher at home. Yeah. <laughs> so I started, uh, you know, uh, introducing the new rules and to my surprise, most of them liked it. They're like, oh, this group is more organized. I feel it's like no, uh, you know, stupid forward messages, right. good morning, good evening, you know, unnecessary chats and craps. So they found it more useful and they started spreading the news. So I did not have to, you know, uh, advertise it anywhere at all. Just by word of mouth, from 70 members, yes. now we have 1,933 members. 1,933. <laughs> By the time this program is aired in January, you will have 2,000 people. Sure. Because on an average, I'm adding around three people at least every day. Really? So it's growing really fast now. So are they, so when you, because you are so organized, so when you are adding people, are you making groups of them? Yeah, the, actually what happened was uh, I am, uh, I know I really want to reach out to somebody in WhatsApp to increase the number of group members <laughs> in one group because the one group can accommodate only 256 people. Uh -huh. So eventually what happened was from WOW 1, we did WOW 2, WOW 3, WOW 4, WOW 5. Now I'm handling WOW 8. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's a big WOW. <laughs> so now for people who don't know what WOW is, yes. uh, it's only women. No men can come in no. there. So women talk to one another, helping one another. Uh, I'm looking for somebody to help me with my baby, or yes. uh, if you have a mattress, or, or I have a mattress, somebody wants it, you can have it. Yes. But what is different in our group is, uh, it is not public. So ah. whoever is in my group, 
I know them somehow. I see. So I also know who referred them. So if at all there is some issue, I know who to ask. Like, hey, what did that woman do here? Like, right. you know, she was in my group. She was trying to sell something. Now she's gone. Like something happened. So I have a track of all. 1,900 ladies, yes. who they are and where they are from. Yes. So it is very close group and it's very safe group where you can share even your personal phone number and address. Like right. So far in the six, five, six years, there has been no issues. Right. So what happens is if somebody is asking for, a, uh, for say, a cleaner, right. so they say, okay, I live in Coquitlam, yes. I'm looking for a cleaner. So far, my members say, Ramya, moment we put a message in your group, there's like overwhelming response. I get like seven, eight, nine, ten messages within 15 minutes saying yes. that I can come and clean. I can come and clean, right? So yes. that is how you can find things easily. And those who are, I mean, for example, if you are looking for a plumber, mm. that plumber is a known plumber to me. Mm. So he, so he, I know what he does, and I know how genuine he is. Right. He's not somebody who you picked up from Google randomly. Right. He charge you like you know a big bill. Yes. So I always add people who are only very reasonable. Yes. And who are very good at work. Wow. And if I hear many negative uh, reviews about them, right, I don't recommend them. You just take them out. Yes. Isn't that just awesome? So you're doing this out of the goodness of your heart? Yes. Why? <laughs> because when I came here in Canada, I literally felt lonely. Uh, even though I was surrounded by my community, my, you know, people and all, I still felt like there is something missing, you know. For ev each and everything, I had to, you know, run around uh, places to find, uh, you know, it's a small service. Even if I want to fix a light bulb, so sorry to say, uh, most South Indian women are not, have, I mean, men are not handy. <laughs> <laughs> they are very good in profession, but they can't fix a light bulb. <laughs> so I have to find an electrician, you know, to just put a light bulb. So it was very overwhelming for me as a homemaker. I was a homemaker for uh, five years. So I found out that it was so hard to find services uh, who is more reliable and economic. Right. So that is when I started gathering information. Now, if you see, my phone will literally burst because I have so much contacts. If you ask me, like, I need a lawyer, I'll first ask you which lawyer because I have a real, a real estate lawyer, I have family lawyer, I have this lawyer, that lawyer, I have a list of lawyers, I have a list of plumbers, list of electricians and also area wise. If you're looking for a plumber in Vancouver, I will refer Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a plumber in Surrey, I'll refer plumber in Surrey. So that's how uh, I, I uh, you know, kind of established my network here. Wow. Wow, exactly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Ramya, you mentioned that you're a physiotherapist by profession. I want to take a short commercial break, come back and talk to you about your profession. And how did you leave that beautiful country called India and Tamil Nadu and came to Canada? Sure. <laughs> uh, we'll take a short commercial break and come back and talk to Ramya a little bit more. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to Women in Focus. Ramya is our Woman in Focus today. Ramya, we were talking about you being a physiotherapist. Now tell me, where were you? You were born in Tamil Nadu. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and your profession which is physiotherapy. Did you want to, to be a physiotherapist as a young girl? girl? Yes. To, just to begin with, I was born in Pune. Oh, Pune. <laughs> yes. I said not South India. Yeah. Achha. I was born in Pune because my mother uh, was born and brought up in uh, Nagpur. Ah. Though they are South Indian, my grandfather was, uh, was in railways. So she was born and brought up in Nagpur. So she knows Marathi and Hindi. And you know that's where she grew up. Right. I have so much connection with North for sure. Like, you know, it's not like I'm South Indian, South Indian. <laughs> so I speak nice, good Hindi. <laughs> That's and, good. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was born in Pune and raised in Chennai. And uh, as and when I grew up uh, at school, I wasn't a great student. Uh, but then the moment I stepped into the college and, you know, something came uh, into me. And uh, I, I was so passionate about this profession by seeing patients, being around in the medical college and the hospital. It changed me uh, mm. completely. Uh, so I, I am still, like, so passionate about my profession and mm. whatever I do. Uh, because I feel our uh, profession is very rewarding mm. when you see the patients, uh, you know, getting rehabilitated and their life changes because mm. of the physiotherapy. So that drive and passion was always there uh, in me. But um, the very reason we had to leave uh, Tamil Nadu, though I know it's beautiful and nice, was because it was getting so saturated. And uh, my husband is a physio too. We both work in the same clinic. Okay. And uh, so we both decided, you know what, let's just try and see, like more 
moving to a different country. But back then when we um, applied to the uh, Canada immigration, it was getting too delayed. Right. So uh, we moved to Malaysia first. So we were actually lecturers back in India. Uh -huh. uh, we were working in both uh, in the same college, medical right. college. And then from there, we moved to Malaysia and working as a lecturer as well right. uh, for three and a half to four years. From there, when we applied for um, uh, Canada, Canada, nine months. You were that here. That said, we were here. So it was pretty fast. Yes. And uh, once we stepped here, uh, my husband had you know quite a bit of struggle to uh, get into the profession because we have this uh, very tough licensing exam here. Oh, really? So, yeah. So by the time he was doing the exam, I was actually pregnant. So mm. I took a long five years break. <laughs> <laughs> so I happily raised my first child without yes. any distraction. Right. I was like there for her for all five years right and then once she started going to the school mm. and like now no waiting I'm anymore bored. <laughs> yeah i'm bored i need to get back to my profession right. so then i gave my exam and i started pursuing physio here okay so physio is a huge field you yes. know i mean it looks after your entire body um what do you uh, specialize in yes so of course physiotherapy has various branches physiotherapy in cardiology physiotherapy in uh, bones like the orthopedics physiotherapy in neurology even there is a special uh, physiotherapy for hand only just, just hand, hand. Really? just hand yes hand physiotherapy so what i am doing is a women's health physiotherapy Ooh. so whatever a uh, woman needs uh, in terms of physiotherapy uh, I have done uh, multiple specialization course here after coming to Canada. Okay. So that ta that has taken my passion to a very different level now. So as of like no looking back, I am going to do this forever. So I just love doing what I'm doing now, the women's health physiotherapy. Okay. So what do I do is I treat uh, prenatal women like okay. who are pregnant, yeah. who have issues during pregnancy. Okay. So the very stereotype of people telling, oh, it's common in pregnancy, pain is common, this is common. You don't have to suffer during pregnancy. It can be managed. Ah. So definitely it can be managed with physiotherapy. So that is one thing. And postnatal is the most important phase of life yes. where women is recovering from such a huge, uh, you know, I would say it's a trauma to the body, of right? It Both is. Physical, mental, so physiological trauma to the body. So the body has to recover. So in right. that phase, I feel definitely women should get physiotherapy done. It is, physiotherapy is not just massage and exercises. Yeah. It is much more. Uh, because I don't know, because if I am coming from lecturing background, yeah. Yes. I treat each of my patient as my student. Ah. So I always transfer my knowledge hmm. to them hmm. in such a way that they first understand what is happening to them hmm. and I will make them understand how to fix it on your own. Now is this because you went through all this yourself and you didn't have any help? Absolutely. You just pulled word out of my, out of my mouth. When I came to Canada, yeah. all the places where I was lacking help. Yes. For example, I was I had a, quite a bit of struggle with breastfeeding after I had my baby. Right. And uh, I did not know about postnatal physiotherapy exercises and there was not, no guide. And um, and also during pregnancy, yes. all this, uh, the issues I had, Right. I was just tolerating everything. Though I was was a physiotherapy back I mean, at that time mm. I had knowledge mm. but still I was lacking something mm. so this pushed me to like hey, how many women are suffering like this so we yeah. need to educate them like we need to help them right. in every phase of their life especially right. in pregnancy and breastfeeding that's very interesting because the other day I was watching a video in which a woman was saying that there are there are some women that go through their monthly period mm. and it is excruciating pain some people it, it, there isn't that much yes. pain like in my family we had three sisters my middle sister had a lot of problems mm -hmm. I never had any problems with that and I also stopped you know my periods at a very young age mm -hmm. but she continued and the youngest one also had a lot of issues so men don't understand that the period pain is like having a heart attack yes <laughs> isn't it Yes. Now recently they have uh, researched and they have proved that the pain uh, during the periods is almost same as heart attack. Yes. And of course, yeah, for each one uh, is different. For each woman, the experience is different. Right. And uh, again, nowadays they have found out that the excruciating pain during periods yeah. could be possibly an endometriosis. Ah. So uh, that is another big topic, uh, especially in uh, here in BC. Endometriosis is being uh, actually undiagnosed in most of us, yeah. and uh, you know it is still an underdeveloped, uh, you know, uh, gray area, area in the 
medical field. In the medical field. Yes. I want to talk a little bit more about your specialty, but yes. let's take a very short commercial break sure. and come back. Because I want to know that, you know, how did you meet your husband and and <laughs> and children? And then I'll I'll come back to your, your profession. Um, Ramya is our woman in focus today. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Women in Focus. So we were talking about women's health. Uh, I want to come back to that, but you mentioned you were pregnant. You had how did you meet your husband? So uh, I'm married for past 15 years. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, he has been my husband for past 15 years, <laughs> tolerating me. <laughs> my dad is still lost, struck by like how is he managing you? So <laughs> we both are from same profession. Right. So um, um, you know. We we are from the same area, the where we lived. So is it is it arranged marriage or is it love marriage? It's a very tough question. It's a arranged marriage, which I mean, it's a love marriage which we arranged. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully so, said. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, my sister got married just few months before me, and yeah. uh, I was missing her a lot. And uh, I literally, I know, I felt like uh, I'm going into depression. I was missing her, and uh, my dad asked me like, "You need you need some change of mind. Yeah. Do you want to?" study further like do like a higher studies yes. or do you want to get married because I have money for only one of those right <laughs> I said I'll get married <laughs> you said that <laughs> I said I'll get married I didn't know I didn't know what I'm jumping to right so yes. I was so excited to get married and at the same time I got job in the uh, in the in the, the college, ho the college yes. where he was assistant professor working there yeah and um, it, you know it's so strange we met in the month of August around like in 15 16th of August September 10th, he proposed me, and October 3rd, we had our engagement. Wow. Yes, and yeah, everything is wow in my life, yeah. And February, <laughs> we got married. So it was so fast. I still tell my husband, didn't we get much time to think, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we would have given a little bit more thought. So that's how we met. That's how we fell in love. And immediately, my parents agreed because everything looks perfect for them. Like, we both are in the same profession, good age gap, and everything was fine. They're like, just go out, go marry. Wow. And yeah, so once we married, as I said, we moved to Malaysia and yes. I didn't have like baby for, for for past five years. It was quite a bit of struggle. Right. And then I had my first daughter. She is now 10 years old. Yes. And uh, recently I had my second bundle of joy oh, lovely. after 10 years of oh. my first one. <laughs> so she is one and a half years now. Lovely. And keeping us all on Very toes busy. and busy. Yeah. Yes. Good for them. Good for them. Yes. Now. We talked about your profession. Now, you're very passionate about it. Uh, you're doing volunteer work with WOW, and you're doing your own profession. So you are a certified physiotherapist yes. in this field, but specializing in women's health. Yes. Now, giving birth, uh, obviously, you know, our, our pelvic is, is, is used for that. Mm -hmm. and, and the size of, many people used to think that the size of a woman's, you know, behind yeah. is, gives an idea as to how easy is it for them to have a child, yes. you know, delivery and yeah. all that. So th that part of our body gets damaged the most yeah. and our internal parts as well. So do you look after all of that? Yes. So that is what is called as a pelvic floor, the uh -huh. muscle which is actually lying right beneath, like underneath our, uh, like the end portion of our uh, pelvis yes. and in between our two legs. Right. So the muscles which are responsible for holding our uterus, hmm. the rectum and the bladder. So rectum is the place where people poop and hmm. the bladder is the one which holds the pee hmm. and the uterus is the one which we uh, hold the baby. baby. Right. So all these things are well contained in and being held by this pelvic floor muscles. Ah. So these pelvic floor muscles also functions when we pee and poop by relaxing and yes. let us void. Right. So that is one of the main function. Mm -hmm. So what happens during pregnancy is we put excess load on it. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to tell my patient as an example, like if you go to a shop, mm. you have a carry bag and you put one kg potato, it can handle. Mm. If you put 10 kgs of potato in the same bag, mm. the bag is eventually going to stretch. Mm. So once the bag stretches, if we don't handle it well, if we don't give a support, if we don't strengthen it, it's going to tear. Mm. And you can see one potato popping out and saying hi, right? <laughs> so that's what happens to our pelvic, pelvic floor. Our pelvic floor eventually can become weak and a bladder can come out. That's called prolapse. Oh. So I am specialized in treating that. So once that happens, can you 
reverse it? Yes, there are several stages of prolapse. If you come in the early stage, which is actually unfortunately asymptomatic most of the time. So you don't know that you're having a prolapse unless it becomes the final stage. So that is why I tell women, if you have ever delivered baby in your life, no matter how old you are, no matter. I have even uh, you know, helped a woman who is 85 years old, who, had, uh, who has been in four diapers in a day, and eventually we cut down to one diaper a day, which was a huge change in her life. She is 85. So any, any age women, if you have ever delivered a baby, you have to get it checked uh, by your pelvic floor physio to see if you have anything popping out. Um, so that is one of the, yeah, one of the very, again, gray area where not, it is not being spoken about. So one symptoms, what I can tell you is like burning down there. Hmm. If people say, oh, when I pee, it burns. Often they misinterpret as urinary tract UTI. infection. Yeah. Yes. Then they go to the doctor, doctor takes your urine sample, he says, oh, there is no infection. Yeah. So why is it burning? Yeah. It could be because your bladder is popping out. Yeah. Right? And even pain during, uh, when there is pain there, right. intense pain, most of the women describe as, I feel like a ball popping out from my vagina. Right. So that's your probably uterus or your bladder. So these are the symptoms you have to watch for. Whew. We could do a whole program on that. Yes. <laughs> I know. My. So that keeps you busy. Do you, do you have your own pr practice? Uh, we, uh, my husband and I, we both are physios, as I mentioned before. Yes. We both are working in a clinic called Back and Body Wellness Center. So okay. it's in Surrey. Yes. So we are independent practitioners. Right. So we do, uh, I mean, my husband is there for past 10 years with them, and I'm right. uh, there for past seven years. Uh, we both love our clinic, uh, right. amazing atmosphere. So that is where I practice my pelvic physio. But if people wanted to meet you yes. personally, they could do that? Yes. Okay, uh, could we give your uh, number out? Yes, definitely. You okay. can. Act, we can. Act, I can share you the clinic number and the clinic uh, address. Perfect. So they can book their appointment. I also do a free phone consult right. because uh, women don't know whether they are reaching the right place. So I yes. don't want them to come all the way and feel like, oh, this is not what I was looking. Right. So I do a free phone consult okay. uh, so that they understand what they are coming for. What they are coming for, Ramya. My God, this has been such an interesting and uh, knowledge filled interview for me and I want to thank you for that. I, I am so grateful to even be here and uh, you know giving opportunity for me to talk about this is such a big honor. Because it's we will it's have you do this on radio on a regular basis I think. Sure. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> Ramya Vinod has been our woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back.